we are going to talk about what is Azure Load Testing, how you can integrate into your CI CD workflows, and how you can identify performance bottlenecks using Azure Load Testing. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikita, a product manager in Microsoft. Hi, everyone. I am Nagarjuna, a product manager with Microsoft working on Azure Load Testing. Azure Load Testing is a fully managed load testing service that helps developers and testers generate high scale load easily, get actionable insights, and identify performance bottlenecks. You'll be able to generate high scale load needed to load test your endpoints without needing any complex infrastructure. You can specify the load, easily identify performance bottlenecks, and which components are maxing out when your system is under load. Start with performance testing early in the development lifecycle and easily identify regressions. Specify the performance expectations of your application using different metrics such as response time, error rate, throughput, etc. And make sure that the pipeline gets executed only if these performance benchmarks are met. You can view the load test summaries in Azure pipelines or GitHub and view the detailed results on the Azure load testing portal. For this demo, we'll be using an e-commerce application, Contoso Traders, which specializes in electronic products. I'm logging into the Contoso Traders application using my Azure Active Directory AAD credentials. Once I'm logged in, I can search for products. Scroll through the products. Pick a product and add it to the cart. I can go to cart, view my items that I've added, and go ahead to check out the items. So let's look at how we can load test this application that Nagarjuna just showed us. This is a JMeter script that I've written for load testing the e commerce console traders application. As you know, Azure Load Testing runs JMeter scripts at scale. So you can just uh, upload a JMeter script and run the script at, on Azure Load Testing. Uh, looking at this JMeter script, we have a thread group first for authentication. Remember the AAD authentication that Nagarjuna showed us? Uh, you can add a thread group and add a uh, HTTP request to log into the application and fetch a bearer token. As you can see, I've, uh, I'm hitting the Microsoft login endpoint with my username and password that I want to uh, log in with. And this uh, will extract the, the token from the response that I get. This token can now be used for load testing my further uh, endpoints. Now, I want to load test the user scenario where a user logs into the application and then lands at the product page searches for a product, views the product, then adds a product to the cart, and then can view a cart. They can also search an image uh, on the website. So as you can see, I have configured my different samplers here for load testing each of these APIs. Now, each of these APIs uh, have a, a domain name, a path, uh, all the parameters that are required for the payload, and they also have a authentication header. So this is the bearer token that is required for me to log in using AD. Uh, so it's as simple as that. You can configure AD authentication and load test each of your endpoints. I also have some variables here. So I have parameterized my script because I don't want to hard code these values into my script. So I have my API endpoints parameterized. I also have my tenant ID, client ID, username, and password that I need for authentication. Uh, and these are uh, secret variables that I can provide in Azure Load Testing in a sensitive manner. And we look at that uh, later in the later part of the demo. Let's now go ahead and see how we can run the load test in Azure Load Testing. We'll get started by creating an Azure Load Testing resource. You can pick a resource group, give a name to your Azure load testing resource, and pick the region. Well, when you choose a region, the load generating 
test engine instances are deployed in the region that you pick for your resource. For better results, you can choose the region where you expect most of your users to use the endpoints from so that you can better simulate your test load. The Azure Load Testing resource is a hub of all your load testing activities. It contains the different tests that you have created. You can create any number of tests as required, and you can run each of these tests multiple times whenever you need to run a test. You can get started with a quick test where you can just provide a URL, uh, multiple parameters in terms of the load, uh, the test duration, and the ramp up time. Or you can do a full blown uh, test using the JMeter script, similar to the one that Nikita just showed us. So let's look at how you can load test your application from a CI CD workflow. So this is my GitHub repository, which contains the source code of the Contessor Traders application. So uh, as you can see, I have my application uh, uh, source code here, but I also have a, a Azure load testing folder, which has all my scripts that I need to run the load test. Let's look at what I have in this folder. So you see, I have the JMeter script that I just showed you sometime back, uh, and I have committed this into my repository. I have all other files that I need uh, for me to run the load test. And I also have a config.yaml. Now, config.yaml is a way for you to uh, describe all your test requirements in a code format. So this is config as code for the load test. Let's look at what this file looks, at, looks like. So you have basic details of your test. You have your test name. You have the test plan, which is the JMeter script. You have the description of the test the number of engine instances that you want to run your test script on, and uh, all your configuration files. Now you, what is interesting is you can also define certain service level indicators for your test. So I can define my failure criteria for different metrics that I want to monitor and make sure that my application meets these expectations that I have for my APIs. For example, uh, the view product uh, API, I'm setting up that my error percentage should not exceed 10%. Uh, I'm also setting some more uh, SLIs here where for the product landing page, I'm saying that 90th percentile of my response time shouldn't exceed uh, 3000 milliseconds. And similarly, I have a 90th response time for the view cart uh, and the threshold is 100 milliseconds. So I can set these criteria here and based on how your application performs during the load test, uh, we evaluate these criteria and you can pass or fail your workflow based on the results of these SLIs. These, this makes sure that if you have a code which does not meet your expectations, you are not promoting this code into production, which can result in uh, downtime and it could not lead to a great experience for your customers. So that's how you can make sure that the code that you promote to production is always uh, meeting your expectations. Remember, we had some secret values that uh, we needed for the authentication. So it's not good to check in your secret values directly into your uh, GitHub repository. And that's why you can just store them in a key vault and provide the secret identifier here. So as you can see, I have a client ID, tenant ID, the username and password that I need for logging in into my AAD credentials. And uh, I can just provide the secrets from the uh, key vault here. What Azure load testing would do is when the script is running, it will fetch the credentials from keyboard in a secure manner and provide it to the JMeter engine when it is run. So this uh, secrets are not exposed anywhere and are very securely fetched and used during the load test. Uh, all other non-sensitive parameters like my endpoint for my APIs or any other parameters that I would like to pass to the load test, I can pass it as an environment variable here. Now let us look at what the workflow file looks like uh, and how I can integrate this load testing into my GitHub workflow. So this is a GitHub workflow uh, that I have that can run, uh, you can schedule when you can run this. For this demo purpose, I've set a manual run, but you can run it on a schedule or you can run it when you have a PR or a commit uh, into your branch or repository. 
So I have defined uh, some variables, which are my load test resource name, my resource group, and the location. These are the ones that uh, you just saw uh, when Nagarjuna showed you in the portal. So uh, in a CI CD workflow, you can create these uh, infrastructure that you need to run your load test using the ARM or the BICEP uh, templates. Uh, now let us look at how you can run the load test. So I have a login to Azure action here where I just use Azure login action and uses uh, a service principle to log into my uh, Azure account. Now, when I use the Azure load testing action, I can just provide the load test config YAML file that we just saw and then provide the name of my resource and the resource group. Once I'm done running the load test, I can I get all the results of the load test, uh, which are exported into your GitHub workspace. You can upload these results into your GitHub workspace um, by just uploading the artifacts, and you'll find them in the workflow run. Now let's look at a run that I had uh, recently run this workflow, and let's see how it looks. So this is a run that I had. As you can see, this run has failed, and we see that the load test step has failed here. Let's look at why this uh, run failed. So as you can see, the run uh, test run uploaded the test plan and it started running a test uh, and the test run also completed. We have a quick summary of how many virtual users, what was the step uh, test status and everything here. Now, these are my test criteria. These are the SLIs we talked about. Uh, I see that one uh, of the three passed and two other failed. As you can see, the error percentage for my view product was very high. The uh, product landing page response time was well, well, way below, uh, and that is a good sign. So it passed. And my, uh, but my response time for my view cart was uh, very high, and so that failed as well. As you can see, we have all the client metrics for all the requests that I had in my JMeter script. I have all the statistics here. And finally, you see that the test result failed because the test uh, criteria did not meet my expectations. Now, I want to see why exactly uh, my test result failed. Why did my APIs did not meet the expectations? So now we are going to look uh, at how these metrics look in Azure Portal. I'm going to take you to Azure Portal and show you how this test run looked and what were the metrics for this test run. So I can go to Portal and I can view uh, all the results of uh, my test run. So you see, this is the dashboard that we provide you, um, and you can view this in Azure portal for all your test runs from whether it is run from a CI/CD pipeline or if it is run from the portal itself. So you can see the statistics here. We have a high level overview of what was my error percentage, my response time, the thing like what was the throughput that my application um, was able to give. And I see that the test criteria here as well um, have two have failed and one has passed. Uh, now I look at what is the client met client side metrics. Now client side metrics are the metrics that JMeter. Uh, provides uh, from the client side to see uh, to tell what was the response time and what how many errors were reported back by your application. As you can see, as my load ramped up uh, at certain point, my application started throwing errors, and these are all uh, server side errors. So there's something wrong with my application. I can monitor the Azure components that I have. For example, the Contiso Trader application has uh, an AKS cluster. It has uh, some databases and it has an app service. So I can always configure that in my test run uh, to show me the server side metrics as well. As you can see, now I can monitor what went wrong with my application components. I see here that uh, the Q Kubernetes cluster was fine and uh, I'm looking at what went wrong. I see that my Cosmos TV for my cards API uh, the RU consumption was very high at certain point, it reached 100. So that could be a bottleneck in my application. Uh, I, I also want to see what happened with the products uh, API. So I see here the SQL DB uh, for my uh, products DB is uh, reached 100% in the CPU percentage utilization. So this these could be bottlenecks for the products and the cards API. And I can uh, go ahead and look at 
what can what i can do maybe i can increase the r use for my cosmos db or i could also uh, increase the sku uh, add one more instance or one more core to my uh, sql db and that might help me get a better performance so this is how you can correlate the application component server side metrics with the load that you had generated and see that at certain point is is your application component not responding because uh, of the high load so in this session today we looked at the azure load testing service how it can be used to generate high scale load against endpoints hosted on azure or on premise or in any other cloud we looked at how to set up a jmeter script to load test an e-commerce application the contoso traders we looked at how to integrate azure load testing into the ci cd pipelines and we analyze the results to identify performance bottlenecks you can try out the demo by using the sample repository and the artifacts available there you can use the resources available at aka.ms/multresources to get started with azure load testing and please do share your feedback on azure load testing at aka.ms/mart-feedback thank you